But one last thought. I would hope that, uh, uh, again, I think the moon is close by, and whatever we can actually get a, a benefit out of going back there, we should, uh, before you take the next step. Uh, however, the, the most important thing was if Mars, can I, uh, I ask permission for, for one minute for, for this question, and that is, you have indicated that Mars had a, uh, was totally different thousands of years ago. Is it possible that there was a civilization on Mars thousands of years ago? So the evidence is that uh, Mars was different billions of years ago, not billions. thousands of years ago. Well, yes. That. And, and um, there would be, there is no evidence that uh, I'm aware of that would you, rule, would you rule that out? That, see, there's some people, well, anyway. Would you, I, would, uh, I would say that is extremely unlikely. Okay, well, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Brothers. Thanks for the good job you're doing. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Rohrbacher. Looking forward to finding out what's up there, that's for sure. Although through a process of Pavlovian conditioning, the harnessing of ferocious peer-pressured conformity as force for rejecting such claims that a past civilization once inhabited Mars, or indeed Mars as being the origins of life on Earth, it is a theory held in high regard by countless great-minded professionals within astrobiological fields. This strong scientific interest is often due to the planet's proximity and indeed its many similarities with Earth. However, to date, no proof has ever been publicly disclosed of past or present life on Mars. This, however, does not mean that they have not found it. We here at Mystery History have a far more accurate understanding of the processes of concealment, and indeed, the specific motivation behind such conspiracies than most. We often realize the thinking behind the concealment of certain past events, motives which far outweigh the financial gain one could expect from knowing that which others do not. Through our extensive research into artifacts which push our timeline here on Earth back several hundred million years, we have come to realize that the majority of people, unfortunately, are content with a lie, a lie in replacement of a terrifying truth. Numerous studies have revealed that human nature is, in part, formed by a supposedly unknown past trauma, or possibly several. It seems we have lived through an event which we could not comfortably deal with on a psychological level. The syndrome has become known as planet amnesia, and numerous highly compelling studies have demonstrated a strong argument for its existence. It seems we also have characteristics isolated by numerous talented individuals which demonstrate our anatomical structure was not built for Earth suggesting we were built for an entirely different gravitational field, specifically a lower gravity, one like Mars has. Many other ailments we suffer, some believe, demonstrated that we were not originally native to Earth. Scientific searches for evidence of life began in the 19th century, and they continue to this day via telescopic investigations and landed missions. However, it is imperative, while searching for the truth, to be vigilant of concerted efforts to conceal it, or the creation of distractive conspiracy, funded hostilities, and attacks directed toward possible hypothesis. During the first days of serious exploration, regarding the posit that civilization began on Mars, a lot of people were indeed searching for the ruins of such anomalies. Modern scientific inquiry, on the other hand, merely mocks such opinion, heavily emphasizing the search for water, chemical biosignatures in the soil and rocks at the planet's surface. Did the realization of intricacies surrounding such a theory being true stonewall further public study? It does appear to be the motive for concealment which we have experienced many times before. Have ruins been discovered and subsequently covered up due to a wanting to hide a past catastrophic event? An event which took our species back to the Stone Age? As the trickle of truth inevitably turns into a river, maybe one day we will finally know for sure. Most people have never heard of Pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. 
Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program, with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon Earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this tenth tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another, regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, 
but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.